nature's blueprint to harness these waters. It was imagined that irrigation projects on these rivers would take at least 70 lakh more acres into their fold and turn this arid and overexploited region into a green and prosperous one. But with the merger of the two states in 1956, the fate of Telangana got sealed forever. All the projects contemplated before the merger were abandoned. Those already in process came to a grinding halt. And the ones promised in the new setup are either yet to take off or remain eternally unfinished. For almost 50 years, the people of Telangana have waited silently for the water they believed was theirs, unaware that their land, water and projects would be taken away bit by bit, and even their age-old resources would be allowed to dry up, silt and decay. In Telangana, the area under surface irrigation has in fact shrunk by almost half, from 20 lakh acres in 1956 to just about 12 now. After all these years, the image of Telangana is very disquieting today. In its long alliance with Andhra, what Telangana has lost is hardly beyond anybody's imagination. In the Krishna waters, there are 50 TMC. But with Bhima, Kalvakurti, Nettampad, SLBC Tunnel Canal, and Nagarjun Sagar tail pond pending for decades, it's barely able to use 100 TMC of water out of the 900 used up by the state. Almost 800 TMC is used up by the Andhra region. Sri Sailam and Nagarjun Sagar dams, the temples of modern India on River Krishna, had promised to give water in equal measure to both Andhra and Telangana. But even these so-called temples have turned into monuments of denial and exaction for the people of this region. While water flows to Andhra from the Sri Sailam project, Telangana continues to wait for its share in these waters. Promised decades ago, the Sri Sailam Left Bank Tunnel Canal is yet to surface. Nagarjun Sagar Dam, originally proposed at Aileshwaram, about 19 kilometers from the present site, would have given abundant water to Telangana. But soon after the merger, it was moved downstream, leaving most of this region quite literally high and dry. And with further diversion of water for power generation, Telangana is starved of water even here. Kodavari, the Ganges of the south, meanders through Telangana for almost 600 miles. Yet, Sriram Sagar is the lone project on this mighty river. And even this project, grounded 40 years ago, is still in its first phase. Of the proposed 15 lakh acres, hardly 6 lakh are irrigated. Ichampalli, a lift irrigation project proposed by the Nizam's government years ago, is still in doubt. And same is the fate of Yallampalli, Devadula, Dummagudam, Lindi, Gutpa, Ali Sagar, Pranahita and Lower Penuganga and most other projects on Godavari and its tributaries. While the Telangana farmer waits helplessly, more than 90% of his share in the Godavari waters also quietly flows to Andhra. Year after year, the government promises to revive and restore irrigation projects. Budgets show massive fund allocations, but Telangana remains thirsty, parched and barren, mile after mile. The Bachamath Tribunal on Water Allocations foresaw this situation even in 1976 and warned that Telangana should not be deprived of its rightful share of waters. Yet the worst fears of the people of Telangana have come true. In the combined Sana farmers have not only lost their water, but also their land and their livelihood.